Hi there. I'm going to show you how to make a small hanging basket and this can be used for onions or garlic in your kitchen on a cupboard doorknob or as a little succulent basket. You can put a little pot in it and grow some succulents out of it. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this basket. You will want a water tub with water in it on a towel. I have my workspace laid out with a towel to catch any of the drips that come from the reed. A spray bottle of water a pair of reed cutters. You can also use kitchen shears or any kind of craft scissors that will be um, tough enough to cut through the reed. This reed is fairly fine, so you won't need anything too hefty. A couple metal clamps, just in case to hold pieces together. Your cloth measuring tape. I have some number three round reed and some number one round reed. The number three will be the stakes and then we'll use the number one as the weavers. The first thing you want to do is cut the stakes and we are going to cut these at 20 inches. So using your measuring tape, lay it out at 20 inches and then grab one of your number three round reeds and line the end of the measuring tap tape with the end of the reed, measure out 20 inches and then cut at that length. Cut 12 stakes at 20 inches. And when you've done that, you're going to place these in the bin of water to soak until they're soft and pliable. While your stakes soak, grab a piece of your number one round reed and we'll be putting this in the water to soak while we set up the base of this basket. So unwind a piece of round reed. Getting round reed out of a bundle can be challenging, like trying to untangle yarn. So try to find a piece without cracking it. You can gently thread it through. I've pulled out a number of pieces to work with for my basket so that it's easier to grab. So put, put a piece into your bucket to soak and then set aside the rest of your round reed. And you can now grab out all of your stakes, all 12 of your stakes. Okay, so we're going to start out by working in three sets of four. So pull out four pieces of the stakes and then line up the ends so that the ends match up. And this is a good spot to use a spoke weight if you have one, or you can use your hands or a hammer to hold it down. I'll get my spoke weight in here and set this on the four. So we're going to work four pieces together as if they're one stake to start out with. And then as we're weaving, we'll start to split them off as individual stakes. So grab another set of four, line up the ends. And we're going to overlap these to create an X shape. And then you can put your stake weight on top of all of those. And then the last four do the same thing, matching up the ends. And you want to slide your fingers along them so that they sit right next to each other flat. And then we'll put those on top of the, the, the center point, stack those on top so that it is at an angle. So we end up with six spokes going out from this center point. And then you can place your stake weight over those as well so you get all get a set from all of those different stakes so it holds them all in place. So now grab out your smaller round reed and open it up and we're going to gently create a crimp by folding it in half and then crimping the end so gently so that you don't crack it. Folding it in half creating a crease here in the end so that we can fold it in half like so. And now this loop, we're going to start with this loop and bring it over to our base pieces, our stakes, and loop it over some of these base pieces. So all four of one of these sets of stakes, preferably the, the set of stakes that are on the bottom. So these that are running underneath, we're going to put that around. And then we're going to do some twining with this weaver. So the piece that's on top here, we're going to loop this under the next set of stakes. So bringing it around and under this set of stakes and letting the piece that was under this first set float on top of this second set of stakes. And this, at this point, I'm holding my finger down at the middle to hold all of the center pieces together so that they don't start to scatter around. 
So again, the piece that's on the top, you're gonna bring around and underneath and tuck it right up next to each other. So you end up with an X between each of these stakes where the twining crosses itself like this. This first loop around or row is the most challenging because all the pieces are loose, all the stakes are loose, and this first round will begin to hold them together. So looping around, and then let's pinch the top and the bottom and rotate the whole thing around so that we can get a good angle on it. And again, the top piece under all of these stakes and loop around. And you can untangle it by pulling it back. It'll start to loop around itself behind you. Okay, so we've almost completed our first circle. We're going to continue around in a continuous twining pattern around the basket. So now again, the piece that's on top is gonna go underneath this next set of stakes. And we're going to press it right up against where we began. So this loop here where we began, press this next row right up against it. Again, top piece underneath. You can rotate the basket in front of you so that you can handle it better and do the twining better. So I'm just continuing to loop around, bringing the second row tight up against that first row. Oops. Treating the four stakes here as one stake still. Okay, and then when you come back around to where that loop is, the stake where this loop is, now we're going to split the stakes in half. So two stakes together, we're going to act as if we just created two separate stakes. So put two of these round reeds together and the other two together, and we're going to do the twining around two of them, and then around the next two. And so we're creating more stakes by splitting the original stake. And again, separating two and two. And here's the twist that I mean that happens with your twining if you're not untangling it as you go. And so you'll just run your finger down it to untwist it. Okay, top one underneath. And here, if it gets tight in this center point, you can pull, gently pull them apart so that they split. And I suggest spraying your basket down at regular intervals because these round reeds do dry out quickly. And if they dry, they become brittle and will break more easily, which will be frustrating if you have to start over or slide new ones in for new stakes. So keeping it damp will make the process a lot more enjoyable. Okay, split those in half and do your twining. Okay, and then we're back where we're, we started again, and we'll continue to work with these new stakes as individual stakes. And now I'm going to gently start to fold these stakes up, trying not to crack them. So just fold them so that you create a crease so that you can start to create the wall of your basket. Not folding in them, them in half, but just bending them up a bit so that they begin to fold up. And these are pretty brittle. I'm getting some cracking. So be, be very gentle here. Okay, so now we're going to start working from the outside of the basket to weave up the walls of the basket. And that can be awkward if you are right-handed and we started going left to right 
which feels most natural. If you're left-handed, go right to left, that's totally fine. But when we switch to weaving the outside of the basket, we'll be doing uh, right to left and that can feel a little bit awkward. So we're going to finish off some of this read to get the wall started. We'll switch and go the other direction so that the weaving process is a little, feels a little more natural. So I'm going to keep weaving around doing doing this twining technique pressing close together these the rows clo close together And you can begin to hold it in your hand like this where you're pressing the sides up with your fingers to start shaping the base of the basket so that it starts to curve up. To start to build the walls, you're gonna add tension to the weaver strands that you're working with. So these pieces that you're using as the weavers, you're going to pull them in a little bit tighter as you work and that will begin to cause the walls to start to form up, to cup up. And if you want to switch to the outside to get better leverage and press this down so you can start to form the walls, you can work from the outside like this and then just do the lashing and it'll feel like the opposite direction. Just continue the same. The one that's on top shifts to behind. Okay, I'm going to clip both ends here clip one right behind this stake here. So I'm cutting it just beyond that stake and tucking it into the basket. And then this one between the stakes there and that will tuck into the basket as well. And I'll set this little length aside. And then I'm going to start going in the other direction. So back to a left to right weaving orientation by creating another loop with my reed. So taking another piece of round reed creating a loop at the end, like so, and then loop that around this la the stake that you left off at. So I'm gonna loop it there, and then just like we were doing before, the one that is in front goes behind, and we're gonna twine from the outside of the basket with the same twining technique. And here you can start playing around with how far apart your rows are. You can either pack them really tightly together, closely together, or start to spread them out so you end up with spaces like this where you have more, um, you have more space between your rows. So you're, I'm pulling tight on my pieces, pushing those stakes together to start to create that shape as I'm leaving more space between the rows. So I'm pushing these stakes together in the twining to start to form that basket shape. Okay, so there is the basket shape forming and I have this space here. I'm back to where I started doing the rows further apart. And so I'm gonna go close there and then do a row close together to add some stability right along this row. So I'm doing those tight together. And if they press down as you're weaving, you can lift it up or pack them down tighter if you want you can move them around. They're wet and so they'll shift around easily. Okay, and then I'm gonna go for another space. And then when you come to the end of this reed, again, we're going to trim that behind the stake so that it tucks inside the basket and then grab another piece of reed, tuck it behind and we'll just continue weaving 
pinching it behind so that we hold it in place. And then continuing with the in front and then behind pattern of the lashing. So it gets tucked inside like this and will hold in place in the wall of the basket. Now I want the basket walls to go from this straight up and down and then begin to spread, spread out a little bit like a bell. So I'm going to start creating space between my stakes just like I pulled them closer together to get the walls to start to form going straight up. Now I'm going to add space between each stake to start to have them form outward. And here I'm doing this by adding a space here. You can do it gradually with pressing your rows closely together as well. So I'm just adding some looseness in, in between each set of stakes here as I twine them. And you can see that starting to form the walls lifting out. Okay, the last section of your basket you want to be woven close together because we'll be creating a rim by folding these into the basket or into the walls here. And you want to be able to hide those amidst this section of re weaving. So now I'm coming to the end. I'm gonna do one more row around here, twining. And then I'm going to cut the ends on the inside of the basket right about, let's see, I'm gonna stop here. And so I'll cut this one behind here and bring this one around this next stake and cut it there. You don't wanna cut them at the same spot because they need to tuck behind a stake. So you're gonna cut one and then go one stake over and then cut the next one. So I formed my shape, so I lifted the base a little bit, so the base is kind of tilted to one side. So one side's a little bit higher, I have this angled down. And I'm doing that because I'm going to put a little bit of a handle on one side so that it could hang on a doorknob or something like that. And so if you want, you can do this so that it's totally flat, so you just shift it back so that it's flat like this. You could do a handle or you could finish it off and just have a little basket here and tie some string to, or some ribbon to it and create a looped basket. Um, there's a lot of different ways to use this type of basket. So I'm gonna create that shift in the back to lift that back side up. And then I'm going to create a handle with these two stakes here. So I'm gonna take these and curve them over, first getting them wet so that they're nice and damp. Take these, curve them over and tuck them right up next to this other set of stakes through the row. So through the lashing, tucked in all the way down to that last row. So they're tucked in like so. This other side, I'm gonna go the other direction, stacking them right on top of each other and go to the inside of this set of stakes and tuck them in here. like so. And you can leave it stacked like this or I'm going to pull these out. I'm actually going to loop this around. So loop it through this section twice so that I have a nice tight handle that's looped and then stick it into this space, lift it out a bit, stick it into this space right next to the stakes. threading it through right next to where those other set of stakes are. Like so. And so there's your little handle. You're going to bring each of these sets of, uh, each of the set of stakes around to the stake next to them. And you're going to tuck them in next to those stakes. So tuck them in right next to the stakes, about four rows down or all the way through if you want. I'm gonna go these in all the way as far down as I can and pull them out the other end so it creates a loop at the top there and then again on the next set right next to them 
the next. So we're creating a scalloped edge, finishing off the stakes here. This last one, because we have the handle here and we have this empty space here, I'm going to bring this back and have it overlap in between these two here. So we'll end up with a lot of bulk on this side, but we'll thread it through here and overlap that ring like so. So then we have the space on either side of the handle open. Okay, so the next thing to do is to go in and all of these ends that we pulled through, you can clip them right at the base of that section of weaving so that they're tucked in and just the ends are poking out. And you can do as close as possible so that the ends don't show up too much. So here's your little wall hanging basket or your hanging basket, onion basket, garlic basket, however you wanna use it. It has the nice scalloped edges and the little handle. And this one is tilted, oh, you can see the angle is tilted one side's a little bit higher than the other. I can change that, shift that down so that it's flat across and even try to create a base that it would stand up on. While it's wet, you can do a little bit of molding. Move some rows, rows around if you want to change things up a little bit. While it's wet, it's still pliable. Get it formed to the shape you want it and then allow it to dry. So this reed will take up to 24 hours to dry, maybe a little bit longer depending on how humid your area is. Allow it to completely dry before doing anything else with it. Stain or seal it, I suggest watching this video where I go over stains and sealers and what to use on your baskets and how to use them. You can do a natural sealer to seal it from a natural colored sealer, which is just clear and will maintain the natural color of the reed. Uh, and that will protect it from mold and dirt and um, mildew or you can stain it and that could change the color of the reed. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up because it'll help me make more and better videos and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more basket weaving tutorials and other fiber art tutorials. I'd love to have you join the textile indie community. Check out the links in the description below for all of the tools and materials we use today and lots of other goodies. You can join my email update list for updates on the channel, on my website, and lots of resources, tutorials, in inspiration and more in the fiber arts community. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy weaving.